out Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the night that I've been seeing you like We are Rebecca Childress from the USA and Michael Hayward from South Africa on board my 1976 Valiant 40 brick house. After losing my husband Patrick Childress to COVID-19 almost two years ago, I decided to continue my circumnavigation and left with Michael in 2021 to keep sailing and cruising. This is our journey. <laughs> In this episode, we have sailed north after a very rocky hurricane season together, and we're cruising St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is considered one of the top ten places in the world to go sailing. There's Brick House in the middle there. We're hiking the waterfalls, going to the beaches, enjoying lots of sundowners, fishing as we go from island to island. Lovely. Right in the kisser. And just having an all round good time sailing the Southern Caribbean, having ice cold coffees with lots of whipped cream. <laughs> While Michael has a cold beer. We buddy boated with a single sailor for a few months in the Caribbean, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and he had a pretty life-threatening experience at night while at anchor, and we were pretty powerless to help him in that situation. We also had a lot of fun with them at a bat cave. We don't like to be affected by what other cruisers have said in the past. Uh, we'd rather go there and make an opinion ourselves, meet the locals, experience what you can, take the joy and beauty out of any situation that you can. But you should have some very grave concerns for your safety too. So we hear many incidences of crime in the cruising community. Thankfully, not a hell of a lot of them in the Caribbean. Where this takes place is the bottom of the Caribbean, um, up from Grenada in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, the biggest island here is where the capital is. It's the main island of St. Vincent. And where we were was Buckament Bay, right in here. And we were anchored in the northeast corner, it says 18 feet. Where the Bat Cave is, is right around the corner here, right there where the X is, where the cross is. So we put the dinghy right there and went in. And what it says there about the Bat Cave, you can see in Navionics. That's how we found out that it was there. So as you can see, the west coast of St. Vincent is very mountainous, very beautiful, not very densely populated, and even some super yachts come and take advantage of this beautiful, beautiful area. So this is Buckingham Bay where both good and bad happened. Let's go see what was so great. So you swim right through. Oh, that's not how I read it. This is what we did. Yeah, that is what you read. And you come and you go in one and you come out the other? You never come back You pass out. a fissure that's putting light down yeah. and you keep going through. Oh, I didn't know Well, that's what I understood. This is beautiful that's anchoring. Good. I would call for dropping right here. And How will we be able to find the way through? Don't worry, we will. But somebody's gonna have a big swim. We always like to be careful when we drop the dinghy anchor, just like when we drop the anchor for the big boat. The dinghy anchor can also do some damage. 
you know, I'm not sure if these are rock or coral. It's probably some combination thereof. So um, being even more careful than this would probably be recommended. But Michael went off trying to find a sand spot to put the anchor in and successfully did that. I just moved it. Well, our buddy went right into the water. He was ready to go, but I am not ever so ready to go. I have a few things to do in the dinghy before I can actually get out comfortably and leave the dinghy behind. And you're a girl. Yeah. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Hang on, before we rush in, there is a little bit of a surge. And we're going to go to the left. And it's quite narrow. So we'll just keep pushing through. We're not supposed to be talking in there, but you can hear the bats chirping already. So I'll go through first, if that's OK. It's very dark, eh? It was indeed very dark and I wasn't too convinced that any of us really knew which way to go but because Chris Doyle's book had said that you can go through this cave it gave me the confidence that somebody had gone before us so we weren't the first ones. This is one of the many things that I like about cruising. You can be sitting on your boat fixing it one day or going through a city or going grocery shopping and then the next day you're snorkeling and going through caves. <laughs> Bats are very light sleepers and they're basically hanging there hibernating and if they are awakened they can burn up enough of their stored energy prematurely to literally starve before spring. I actually really love caving and being in dark places and wondering if I'm going to live. So this was, uh, this was quite fun uh, for all of us. When we came out the other side, it was really great snorkeling and we had to go back in the cave the opposite direction a few times. So we went in, we went out, um, Michael took some deep dives down, I stayed at the surface, um, but it was really fun. Here goes Michael, let's see how far he can really go down. How are those lungs, Michael? Down he goes, down he goes, whoa. We are way up there at the surface. There was quite a bit of surge, you know, there was a constant worry that maybe you'd go up and hit your head on the top of the cave or you'd hit part of your body down below. Um, it did take uh, some balancing and some carefulness, but uh, none of us got hurt and it was a fun, fun day. You know, it really seems like this cave should be featured in a movie somewhere. Let me know if you know if it is. Maybe it is. That was great, eh? But just sitting and hanging there with the bags is quite freaking awesome. We've got some big ones in South Africa. Packed with uh, big ones. Bronk without its clothes on? No, it's basically a snail without its clothes on. A snail without its shell on. You see, us South Africans are pretty freaking smart. You are. And um, so I want to show you what the wall would look like that you look for nudibranchs on. Okay. Did you come with me? Yeah. Okay, let's go. This kind of surface all along this wall right here, um, it's all really great territory for nudibranchs, but I don't know, I guess we're in the wrong ocean for those. Anyone know the answer to that? These are Christmas tree worms. Very cool.
that's how he came up with it. Just like that. <laughs> Is it on me? <laughs> New to bro. You know, maybe Mike doesn't believe me, but they really are real. They're really cool to find. Michael's fins actually hit this fellow. Can you see him? This is a scorpion fish. The common names of these fishes comes from the stinging pain that they can inflict. All the species of this family are considered to be venomous mainly due to their dorsal fins. Some species also have venomous anal and pelvic, pelvic fins. The rock fishes are not so toxic as scorpion fishes and lion fishes venom, but still they are capable of inflicting a painful sting. These fishes remain mostly stationary during daylight, but are active at night, which explains why the thing didn't really move too much when Michael kicked it with his fin. Luckily it was his fin, and not his hand, or his arm, or his leg, or anything else. These are sea urchins, and they were everywhere, just waiting to have a hand or a foot step on them. They belong to a group of marine invertebrates called echinoderms, which means spiny-skinned animals. They are related to sea stars, sea cucumbers, and sand dollars. Like their relatives, sea urchins do not have brains or hearts. But they are a highly sought-after meal item on many menus around the world. This, I believe, is a young cowfish or trunk fish, and although they release a deadly toxin, they're actually quite peaceful. Just so you know, I can't get in and out of the dinghy without a rope. But, I just choose not to. That way I can get in and out of the water as many times as I want, and I don't get tired. <laughs> I put my fin into the rope, right where I would step on a ladder, and then I kick up with my back leg, just like if, as if I was getting in without a rope, and I sort of push myself up. But once I've pushed myself up, I then have something to stand on so I don't fall right back in. Sorry. And I can just raise right up and put my knee in, put my body in, and I'm in the dinghy. Easy peasy. <laughs> you know, I've seen these all over the world. I've never quite been able to figure out what they are. Are they some kind of seeds? Or are they some kind of egg? Are they from a fish? Are they from a turtle? What are they from? If anybody knows what they are, let me know. We liked the Bat Cave so much the first time, Michael and I went back together a few days later to do it all again. I think, it, I think it's good that we go slowly and sit there in the entrance and have a look. And it might be a little darker than that. It will be darker. It was way darker this time and there was way more surge. It was a little bit disconcerting, but again, we didn't get hurt, so life is good. But not so wind above your head. Okay, let's go slowly. I didn't want to go slowly, I wanted to go as quickly as possible and get out of there. It got calm when we got to the other side at the entrance and um, Michael, as usual, wanted to go down as deep as he could and see what was hiding underneath the ledge. One of these days, a big shark's going to surprise him and that's going to make a great YouTube video.
you know, it's just so awesome to be able to spend as long as you want at a snorkeling spot, not have to get back on a tourist boat and go back to port and just stay there all day if you want. Swim around, enjoy the ocean, enjoy the snorkeling, enjoy the wildlife, and go home when you're hungry or tired or whatever. Just go exploring. That's what it's all about. of the Caribbean so far. It's quite on par with the Tobago Cays, which is a different thing, but this is this is a deeper dive. There's a lot more to see, I think. Um, but the bats and the sheer beauty of this specific dive, the water's very clean, lots of lovely corals, varieties of fish, really amazing. Yeah. So um, a lot of cruisers seem to be staying away from this area. And as we may mention in a video or something, we had some incidents. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, sometimes things are so beautiful you don't really want to delve too deeply in, in to the bad things. But this, the bad is things. this is a high. There are lows, but this is a high, and it's really, really nice here. And yeah. I'm so glad to be here. With you. I'm glad to be here with you too. You can edit that part out. <laughs> or not. Or not. Um, you know, one thing, the last, we did this a few days ago, and um, it was really, really calm. There was no wind, there was no surge, there was no waves, and, and it was kind of scary, a little scary going through because it was the first time and we didn't know. And, you know, there's sea urchins on the walls, so, and I don't have gloves on, so, you know, it's like, oh shoot, what if, what if a surge pushes me to one side and I put my hand on a sea urchin, oh no. But um, this time it was much more surgy, but I just kept my hands in, didn't touch the walls and figure if I could bounce off a wall with my shoulder that has a sea urchin on it, it's better than my naked hand. So that's what I did going through, but yeah. it was still fun going through despite the surge. And I think this is probably as surgy as I'd want it to be going through. Any more surgery than I should be there. Yeah, at high tide it's, it's a lot um, worse. So another joy of cruising is having lunch after you go snorkeling any time of the day that you want. So we'd always known that St. Vincent on the west side of the main island of St. Vincent um, had a definite element of danger and crime to it. Anywhere from petty thievery to murder has happened in the last 10 years. It's a really beautiful place with a lot of beautiful people and a lot of really great things to see. So we went in very carefully 
and with a little bit of trepidation um, anchoring there but we really wanted to see it and we didn't want to let you know po possibly rumors uh, scare us off from going there we went with a buddy boat the first and second night I was kind of up most of the night with every little sound that I heard outside I was always running outside um, assuming the worst but about the fifth or sixth time that I went up uh, on the second night there were two men in a boat next to brick house um, they were in a little, like a little whaler boat, uh, maybe about 10 or 12 or 15 feet long. And uh, they both had COVID masks on. I don't know what that was all about, but COVID times, who knows what anybody's thinking. But anyways, that wasn't a good sign. They were going out fishing and they claimed to be thirsty. So they wanted some water from us. And I just said, you know, it's not a good thing at two o'clock in the morning to be asking a yacht for water in the middle of the night. And somebody not as nice as me might actually end up hurting them for such a thing. So they apologized, they were polite, they were nice young men, so I thought. Um, and they asked one more time for water and I told them one more time, just go to shore, get your water the same place as I do, 50 feet that way. And so they apologized, they left, and despite my warning that, um, you know, they could get hurt if they asked the boat for water at two o'clock in the morning, they went to our buddy boat. So we shined our high beams on them, and so they knew that we were watching, and so they departed and they rowed away um, a good half mile, three quarters of a mile around the corner into the next bay. So we thought the coast was clear, but again, I woke up for every sound. I think I probably woke up every hour, came out, looked around, made sure that um, you know nobody was going around the boats. We also tried to call our buddy boat um, on VHF and on the telephone. Um, as we had all talked about, I guess he slept through it, couldn't do it. We had our dinghy up and we had our outboard engine locked up on the back of our boat. So it wasn't a small task to take it down and go over and talk to him about it. And we weren't even sure if they really were young kids, just opportunists looking to steal a, a jerry can or what they were really up to. And we really felt they had disappeared around to the next bay. So we didn't go over, wish we had the next morning, we heard a big knock on the side of our boat, very loud, right before we were waking up, and went upstairs to find our buddy boat. Um, he was very calm, he's single-hander, very calm, uh, very cool and collected, explained that he had just been robbed of everything. Um, he woke up with hands around his throat, um, and a gun, well, we won't call it a gun yet, <laughs> but it was later proved to probably be a, a pipe gun. Uh, but basically a pipe, one guy with a pipe and one guy with his hands around his neck. They demanded gold and cocaine. Yeah, something all of us cruisers just store right on our boats, right? So he managed to convince them that there's no gold and there's no cocaine on this boat amongst other things. But they did manage to take all of his money in every denomination that he had. Um, they took all of his devices, phones, iPads, computers, chargers, everything even his hearing aids, all his medications, all his prescription drugs, yeah, all his snorkeling equipment, all his dive equipment, his dive compressor, and everything. They took seven, eight, nine thousand dollars worth of stuff from him. They wanted to take his dinghy and his outboard, but it was on a complicated dinghy system, so um, they didn't manage to get that down and get that away. Um, they had already tied him up just before leaving, probably didn't want to untie him and have him undo the dinghy, so they left without the dinghy and without the outboard. For that, he's lucky, but for the experience of, of waking up hands around his throat and a pipe gun and the loss of all of his things and having to get back all of his identity after that, all his credit cards, all his money, everything. Um, I think the three of us and then two land-based people, both in Grenada and back in the US, worked for weeks and weeks putting his life back together again so that he could actually function. So. Um, yeah, that was our low. That was our low. Um, that was actually my low for a long time in cruising. Um, and it really soured our friendship. Um, it soured uh, the trip going forward after that. Um, I was a lot more fearful than I even am on a usual basis. I mean, my God, I went running up into the cockpit um, without any weapons, um, with Michael steps behind me I went up and was yelling at two boys who were armed and dangerous and ready to rape and pillage the boat that they were boarding and they were about to board Brick House and it's only because I'm a chicken shit and nervous as hell 
I know that these things can happen. And um, they almost did. And We did a lot of things wrong. Our buddy boat being a solo gent, similar age to myself. The, there is a vulnerability if you are alone. We really, really could have done things better. In the very beginning, something that one needs to do is to make sure that you have some telephone calls uh, for the nearest uh, principal police station on an area. Try that number, call it, see if you get through. After this incident happened, we attempted to call the police and there was no answer. There was ringing, ringing, ringing. The second really important feature that we learned after this event was your line of communications between buddy boats and or other boats that are in uh, a mooring field or anchorage. You need to establish just how you will alert a boat next to you. This needs to be discussed. It could be banging on a pot. It could be raising an alarm on your boat. On Brickhouse, we have a really loud alarm that we could have deployed. This may or may not have woken our buddy boat up. If your buddy boat is anchored 50 meters or 100 yards away from you, establish that they can hear your alarm. Try every means that you have at your disposal just to make sure that your buddy boat knows. We tried unsuccessfully to raise our buddy boat both on his cell phone and on VHF 16. So he's a heavy sleeper. Fortunately, Rebecca's a very light sleeper. Any noise on the side of the boat or on the upper deck that is an unnatural sound wakes her. She gets up and she goes and investigates. In this particular incident, I was right on her heels. Um, if I was not, if I'd not woken up, she in all likelihood would not have woken me up to go and investigate. She would have gone up and investigated herself. This could have been a life-threatening situation for her. After that, we agreed that she would never go up ahead of me. It's pointless putting yourself in harm's way and then finding out you're impotent to defend yourself or your boat or your property. So think about these things, whatever strategy you choose for self-defense and or um, taking care of yourself, you need to have a plan in place. Don't run blindly out into the night to confront people. That's going to end badly. As a South African, I come from a background where violence, home breakings, uh, random kind of acts in the streets or in your car, hijackings, things like this are a daily occurrence. Unfortunately, we are quite immune to it. Out in the Caribbean, your average retiree sailing and having a good time may not have the same worldview that I have. Rebecca was pretty affected by the experience on a whole. Even though the boarding was moderate in our experience with it, I, keep, I cannot imagine how it would have affected her if we were boarded and either she was harmed or I was harmed or we had to defend ourselves. I've been through these things myself. I tend to be somewhat immunized, which is really not nothing to be proud of in terms of where I come from, but maybe in some instances it's useful. Those of you that have had some kind of military experience or some kind of um, police training will know what I'm talking about. Just know this, the experience is going to traumatize you. You are not going to sleep well for nights after that. You will not want to go to bed without maximum security in place. And take time to talk to each other. Look for ways of supporting. I may not have been as supportive as I could have been after the situation because I was not as badly affected by it. But it is important to know that after a violent incident and a boarding of this of the nature that occurred that evening there are going to be psychological impact our buddy that was boarded and robbed and violently um, manhandled on board his own boat is a gentleman with a fair amount of, of trauma experience and he didn't feel the need to have counseling afterwards just I think be aware that these things will affect you in ways that you don't quite possibly know. They will affect your cruising, they will affect how you interact with locals. Fortunately for me and for Rebecca on this trip, we continue to, high, to hold all of the locals in high regard and we just decided to put our security up one notch for a little while and um, that has, for me personally as a man, despite my experience, made me a lot more aware. We don't want to discourage you from going to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It's a beautiful place. St. Vincent, the main island where it happened, um, is a gorgeous place with, like I said, gorgeous, gorgeous people, loving, kind, um, so supportive after this all happened to us. So much fun before all of this happened to us and after. You know, we got brought countless, you know, tuna fishes and baked goods and the, the, the Buckingham Bay police uh, had us move over to right in front of their office and they gave us the greatest of security after the whole thing while we were filing police reports and everything. But, um, you know, don't, don't skip St. Vincent because it really is a gorgeous, gorgeous, unbelievably gorgeous island, much, much prettier than the rest of um, St. Vincent and the
grenadines. Um, so definitely worth seeing. But just be careful. Put your bars in. Put your security systems on. Put your alarms on. Um, and take all precautions. But don't miss it. It's a great, great island.